Hi, welcome to Life on the Rock, and tonight our guest is Father Stan Fortuna, a terrific guest, been on the show many times, and tonight he'll be speaking about his new book, You Got to Love, and his new album, uh, The Seraphic Wanderer, and uh, he's played some music for us earlier today, and we're going to show some clips, and uh, so I was thinking it's so fitting that he comes to Life on the Rock, because he has a, such a great love for our Holy Father, John Paul II, Pope Benedict XVI. And um, he's going to share some of that, his wisdom, insights into their teachings tonight. It's all throughout his book. So good to yeah. see you, Doug. You too, Father. Good to be here again. And, uh, you know, this, tonight I want on this opening segment, uh, speaking of our Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, when he was in the United Kingdom in the city of Westminster, he was speaking at the cathedral, the most precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave a salute, they called it, out to the young people. And he talked about love in this address. And he challenged the young people, first off, to look into your own heart. Think of all the love that your heart was made to receive and all the love it is meant to give. And I, I love that way to begin. You know, just our own experience, we all know that we're made for love and we want to be loved. And even we feel fulfilled when we show and give love to others. But also, the, I, when I read it too, it seemed like we realized that there's always something lacking. There's always something more that we want, you know, that we hunger for it. And even sometimes we're afraid to even look into our heart because we don't, I think, because sometimes we feel like it really won't be answered, you know. But the good news is that, you know, we do have people in our life that love us and certainly, uh, he, you know, we have God the Father loves us, Jesus. He sent his son to suffer and die for us and is a great testimony to God's love for us. So the first thing he said, we're made in the image and likeness of God. We're made to receive love. And I know, Doug, you, you speak of love as a mystery, right? It's sometimes it's hard to... Well, uh, yeah, it, to me, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, it separates us from uh, all the other creatures on the earth mm -hmm. in the sense that we can, we have the free will, right. you know, to, to choose to love or to reject it. And it is something that, that uh, has prompted us to do amazing things as human beings, amazing, miracular, heroic, miraculous type things, uh, women giving birth. You know, I've had so many mothers say, after the first child and the labor pains, why would you do this a second time, you know, right. except for love? Mm -hmm. You know, the love is there. Why do, why do husbands and wives work hard and, and, and struggle and suffer to raise children and to, to, to be one in marriage mm -hmm. because of love? I mean, and, and, and you see what happens when we reject the, the, the truth of love and we have the chaos and the falling apart and the loneliness and the emptiness. And right. I tell a lot of young people when I go, give uh, talks to young people is, you know, your value, you know, the, that, that loving value that you seek to be affirmed in is not based on, on your talents, your, your looks, your status, any of that. It's based on the fact that God has breathed His image and likeness into you. And if you doubt that, as the saying goes, look to the cross and see what Christ has done for you. And He didn't die for talents or hair or anything. He died for love. He died for love of our souls. He right, didn't, right. Well, I'm glad He didn't die for hair. I'd be in trouble <laughs> for that one. But, uh, you know, the, the fact that the love of God is so, so uniquely powerful, mm -hmm. it, sets apart, it sets us apart from anything else. Right, and he goes on to say that we also need to give love, we need to receive it and also give. And he said we all have experienced maybe moments of exhilaration, you know, when we feel uh, brimming over with love and how that pushes us into action. You know, it fosters generosity, idealism, the desire to help others, the desire to build a better world. A better world. But he says at the same time, you know, that exhilaration doesn't always, is not always there and it has to be a real choice. He says every day, we have to choose to love, and this requires help, the help that comes from Christ, from prayer, and from the wisdom found in His Word, and from the grace which He bestows on us in the sacraments of His church. So we need help, we need strength to make this decision, and God is the source of, our, of all love, right? He, God is love. So through prayer, we're connected to Him, through meditating on the Scriptures, listening to His Word and the Scriptures to us, and in the sacraments, he, he showers down, rains down his grace upon us, transforms us to make us be beacons, lights, to reflect his love in this world. And he said, he goes on to tell the young people, he said, deep within your heart, he is calling you to spend time with him in prayer. But it must be real prayer. It must be disciplined prayer. It requires making time for moments of silence every day. And he said, in that silence, we discover our true self, and we discover our particular vocation in this life to build a civilization of love. So those are, are great thoughts, and I, I, liked, I love those themes. You know, we need to make time for prayer. It takes discipline, 
and you know God can fulfill our hearts. You know, He satisfies the deepest longings of our heart, and we can go and, and give that love to others. Right. So, yeah. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say? Pope hey, yes. All right. And we do need to say, I, I, I can't even keep up with all the things he's been saying to oh, young he's, people. He's cranking it out. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he really uh, has a heart for young people, and he's uh, meeting with them on different occasions, and we're looking forward to this coming World Youth Day this summer in Madrid, and there's some statements he's been coming out with that, too, we'll cover in the future. So we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with Father Stan Fortuna. So don't go away. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, welcome back to Life on the Rock, and tonight we have Father Stan Fortuna. You've been on the show a bunch of times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's great to have you back. Good to have you on, Father. Thank you. And um, how you been? You been traveling a lot and real yeah, busy? busy like a bee. Yeah. You been traveling in Africa some too? Yeah, Uganda, Malawi, and uh, Malaysia, and just got back from Poland and Rome for the fifth annual JP2 Poland Rome Study Pilgrimage, best one yet. And we already got the date set for the next one. And well, it's let's absolutely talk about awesome. that. Yeah. What is that? What is that pilgrimage about? Well, it's just about JP2, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the great patrimony of and the great person of JP2. As Pope Benedict says, that his mission is to assure that the, the greatness of his patrimony gets assimilated into the life of the church. Mm -hmm. And like when Pope Benedict went there, he said he wants to go there to breathe in the spirit of 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 faith that he lived it, that he lived and breathed in Poland and, and then he said he blessed people in Wodawica where John Paul was born he says and whoever comes here I bless them and I encourage you to breathe in from the font of JP2 mm. I mean he's like Ooh, he loves him so much, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little more than me, I'm not sure. Probably <laughs> because he's the Pope, you know? I'd, I'd have to give him that. But I love, boy, I'm just loving B16 so much. He's absolutely beautiful. What, uh, well, tell us about, first, how did you come to love John Paul II so much? What are the things you really boy, respect? Well, because, like, my conversion and then my entrance into the Capuchins and my encounter with Francis was all sort of uh, contemporaneous with my encounter of this great lion breathing fire, you know, from mm -hmm. October 16th, 1978. You know, and, uh, you know, do not be afraid. Open wide the doors to Christ mm -hmm. and do not be afraid. I said, who, what, what is this, you mm -hmm. know? And so from the beginning, like, he was like, Right in my bullseye, man. Mm -hmm. I kept my eye on him mm -hmm. throughout the whole pontificate. And then every day, every day, every day. Now, since he went to the Father's house, it's intensified. I mean, Doug was saying that it's hard to keep up. And you were saying how mm -hmm. it's hard to keep up with Pope Benedict. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. It's even more difficult to keep up with JP now that he's gone, mm -hmm. especially thanks to the Vatican website, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you go to, you, do you lead the pilgrimage to Poland? Yes. And so yeah. what, where do you take the people? In the, well, we in the start at the spiritual center, the heart of uh, the oh. spiritual capital of Poland, Czestochowa. Mm -hmm. Then we go to Auschwitz and we have mass at the Shrine of Victorious Love, Maximilian Kolbe, and, and uh, the, that, that horror, and then yet the, the power of the victory of love. Then we go into Krakow and we go to Wodawica, we go to Calvaria, and uh, we then eventually we go up to, uh, we go to Nova Huta, you know, where they tried to build a city without a God mm -hmm. and then how he fought. That was the heart of his, of his struggle with the communists, you know, but that's where he really triumphed with love and with truth right. and, uh, and building the church and not refusing right. to back down or settle down. He right. just kept pushing because he was so pushed by love, you know, and then because he himself has said it was love that explained everything to him. And that's what blows me away about right. him, you know. Then we go to Zakopane to the beautiful mountains mm -hmm. where he used to go skiing, used to go there all the time. And then we go to Rome and we have mass in the Vatican Grotto, and we get as close to his tomb as possible. Right. You know, I was amazed in, in Cardinal Jeevish's book, he talks about how John Paul II and he and some others would sneak out and go skiing, right? Over 100 times, he says, we have given him this gift 
over a hundred times. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. They snuck them out. They put them like in the old days with the spy. They held up the newspaper yeah. and they had him sit in the middle of the Mercedes mm. packed with his Polish buddies, mm -hmm. you know? And then they went off to the mountains. <laughs> cool story. One time he was coming down and a little kid seen him. He said, he said, hey, you're the Pope. He says, don't be ridiculous. The Pope doesn't ski. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and he goes to Jimmy Jews, we got to get out of here. <laughs> then they couldn't take him back there no more. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Well, when you go to Poland, what, what part of it most reminds you or has the spirit of John Paul, you think? It's everywhere. It's in the mm -hmm. street. It's in the people, especially Krakow, you know. And, and the more I learn about the history of Poland, uh, the more I can see how he himself, with his words all of a sudden, just take on more meaning. And they don't only become alive, they swell. They mm -hmm. swell. They expand. They expand me. They expand my soul. They expand my heart. So far, this is the fifth annual. I've had people come. But if nobody comes, I'm going every year by myself. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's everywhere, you know. And then the more I learn about the history, I see how he himself has said it, he learned from the heroism of his contemporaries. Mm. You know, the 1944, you know, uh, up, uh, uprising in Warsaw where they had like children, soldiers and women came out with, with, with pierogi pots and knives and spoons and they, they, they pushed back Hitler and, the, and tanks and armies and MK-18s or whatever kind of guns they had mm. and grenades and bombs. They pushed them back for two weeks with knives and children and the city got flattened like a pancake. Mm -hmm. And it was a time when Poland didn't even exist, and it didn't stop them. So mm -hmm. his relentless spirit, he's, he's purely, it's purely Polish, you know? Right. And, and yet there's something he saw that was universal about this gift that Poland is to the world, that he is. And then how God, after all these years, you know, destines Wotiwa to become John Paul II, followed by, right. you know, Ratzinger, Benedict the Sixteenth. Best back-to-back -back pontificate since Jesus the yeah, Peter, yeah. in my opinion. Anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what do you most enjoy when you go? Like what everything. Point, everything? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I, I, you know, every, if there's aggravation, I even try to enjoy that because like John Paul one time, like he said to this priest where I gave a parish mission in his parish one time and the priest was complaining because he broke his leg and went and said, Holy Father, please bless my leg. And the Holy Father said to him, don't waste your suffering and <laughs> popped him on the head, gave him a, a Polish yeah. bop on the head. Don't waste your suffering. Yeah. Wow. So I try not to waste my suffering, you know? Right. And uh, I, I love the food. I love the people. But I love the fact that that's where he came from. And his love for Poland is helping me to love Poland, which helps me to love Jesus and to love the church. And then it helps me to love the love that loves me. And like our, our Father Francis said, that this love is not loved. So I get more shaken by the fact that this love is not loved. So the book, like, you got to love. You do. Because right. you can't live without it. You know, even when you question, is it possible? And mm. there's beautiful stuff in there about John right. Paul even questioning. Is love possible? Yeah. You know, it's beautiful, beautiful. Like the mystery of it, the challenge of it, the gift of it, the impossibility of it, the necessity of it, yeah. the simplicity of it, the beauty of it, the everything of it. Well, let's talk about the book some. You know, I know you open up near the front of the book uh, talking uh, about 9-11 and have that beautiful, I remember that, prayer and quote from John Paul II that he said, I think it was yeah. a year after the attacks. Yeah. And most people hear that, especially maybe in the secular world, you know, you got to love, but even in the Catholic world, and you look at the world and you see the challenges, terrorism, the economic problems, and how do you love in this situation? Suffer. So. Everybody got to suffer. Yeah. I mean, I got a song about that, <laughs> I got the music video about that, but we've got the fullness of the truth about that as Catholics, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you got Catholic athletes making the sign of the cross before the, 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 the free throw, you know, before the, before the swing at the plate, you know, yeah. before the kick at the field goal, or before they, the, before they throw the Hail Mary. Yeah. And, you know, in all our institutions, you know, we're recognized by the sign of the cross. You know, that's how we begin the Mass. The Mass actually is this mystery extended through time, you know. And yet, <laughs> the reality of that is that you know, suffering has meaning and we can draw forth a greater good from the suffering, you know, and, 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 and that's the heart of this, of this great man. And that's, and that's the heart of the book. And I'm so blessed and thankful. Thank you, Cardinal Jivic, uh, for writing the foreword, you yeah. know, to the book, you know, because it's a, the historical link to him, you know, but, but the, the meaning and the value of suffering when it comes, sometimes then you, you can't, you can't comprehend it, you know. You can't even, you can't even think about it. And, and that's where, you know, faith and truth and love, where, where it just all comes together somehow and carries you along. Right. You know, it's the beauty and the power of the mystery of it all. And didn't Cardinal Jeevish say that that was like the central theme of his pontificate? Was that about that teaching about suffering, the value of suffering, and his reaching out to people that were 
suffering. And you saw that mm -hmm. in himself, you know, with the Parkinson's and stuff, and he kept going. And, oh, yeah. 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 Yes, he did. And, and he said that this is, this is especially to young people, because he went, Jivic said uh, f it was from heart to heart, and it was his fire, it, the, the fire it burning in his heart, and this fire that Jesus came to cast on the earth. That, that this is the torch, this is, this is, the, this is the, what's, what's being handed down now, and this, mm -hmm. is, this is what's fueling the new evangelization. And isn't it beautiful to see Pope Benedict to come up with that motu proprio, you know, about the, there's a new pontifical council for the new evangelization. Mm. Hello. Yeah. He's, he's, there you go. Yeah. He's doing exactly what he said he was going to do, which, yeah. is, uh, which is beautiful. Well, can we talk about that a little bit? I know John Paul spoke about the new evangelization. Yeah, he he kind of kind of kicked it. He kind of kind of put it up yeah. to, he kind of, he kind of birthed it, you know right. what I mean? He kind of, with the help of his predecessors, but right. took it to a whole new fresh yeah. level. And Benedict's now mm -hmm. taking that and breaking it down with his genius, you know, with his beautiful genius brain, mm -hmm. his beautiful Bavarian genius <laughs> brain, and with that beautiful <laughs> smoldering heart burning right. with great love. Yeah. And, he, and he's, and he's, He's cutting it up nice, you know. I, yeah. I, sometimes I was talking to, to kids. I say, well, you know, JP is like the great fisherman, and he caught these magnanimous fish and big fish that had the massive catch that could flip yeah. the boat over. And Benedict's like the sushi man. He's coming out, and he's taking all that, and he's cutting it up as only he could do. Yeah. Best back-to-back -back pontificate that, that we've seen since Jesus the Peter. What, how do, you, do you see Benedict as having a real gift of teaching? And it seems like he he brings it down and makes it so. Oh my goodness, he understandable. Sure and yeah, he really. You know, speaking about it, you know, when he went to the UK, you you quoted him when he went to the UK, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I love this how he said to the young people, you know, he says, not only does God love us with a depth and intensity that we can scarcely begin to comprehend, but He invites us to respond to that love. And in responding to the love, He said to the students, and here's the here's the the master teacher. He says, every subject you study is part of a bigger picture. Never allow yourselves to become narrow. Mm. It's one of my favorite lines from, uh, I have a bunch of them. I have a bouquet of favorites from his trip to the UK, but he's, he's beautiful. Right, yeah. Mm. I know the way he brings scripture alive, I always say that. His teachings on scripture, he just makes it so clear and just... Um, just so striking to the heart. Mm -hmm. um, now we're gonna we're gonna go to a song, "Mary Joy of All Who Sorrow." Can you, you set go. that up for us? And yeah, I mean, I was uh, I seen this icon for the first time. There's Mother Mary, like an icon, and she's like this with her hands out and open wide. And then there's all people suffering. There's a handicapped person. There's sick people. There's people in prison. There's there's refugees, and there's there's all kinds of rich people, poor people, all different levels of people. And she's the joy of all who sorrow, because Jesus is God. God is love. The truth of love sets us free, so that God, who is love, can draw forth a greater good from every evil and from all the things that we suffer and all the things that people are suffering in the world. Moved my heart, and then this little song wound up just pouring out. Okay, so we hope you enjoy Father Stan with Mary, Joy of All Who Sorrow. Wipe away our tears 
stay with us today remain throughout the years queen of heaven land of our true home send celestial light shining bright when we feel alone holy mary mother With the glory of heaven's common power. Welcome back to Life in the Rock. We have Father Stan Fortuna <laughs> with us tonight. And uh, let's jump right to Doug. You had a question for Father well, Stan. Yeah, you know, Father, we're talking about love and we're talking about sacrifice. Or we're talking about suffering. And, and I know that that's one of the things that unites everybody, whether you're rich or poor, mm. you know, smart or not so smart, talented, not talented. Everybody suffers to some degree. I remember that in a confession one time a priest simply said to me, everybody suffers. Everybody. Some people, it's, it's, it's such a struggle whether it's marriage problems, whether it's a child straying from the faith, whether it's a loss of a child, loss of a family member, uh, sometimes tragic, sometimes multiple things hit, sickness, financial issues, and, and you know, the divorce situation in our world today, the diseases. It seems for some people impossible to find a sense of love or solace or some sort of con uh, consolation, if you will, yeah. um, with the idea of loving. Um, the mystery of suffering combined with the mystery of love, how do we unite that to really find a sense of hope when it's difficult, when it's difficult, as we said during the break, to even get up in the morning so yeah. for some people. Yeah, yeah. No easy answer, but there is a response, there is a reality that people encounter that can open it up. You know, and during the break we were talking, I was saying it's sort of like akin to like, uh, you know, teenager. You know, and I, I even when I was in Poland, I just started getting a pimple on the end of my nose, you know, and it was one of those ones that's under the skin, you know, and like you could feel it and it hurts mm -hmm. and it turns red and it swells and, and you, you go like that and it, and it don't go away, you know, and it hurts more. And then you kind of wait and then you just, you know, you look like a fool, you know, walk around with strawberry on your nose. And then all of a sudden it comes a point when, you know, you say, uh oh, it's going to come to a head. And I know this, I've been through this right as a teenager, teenagers go, I'm 50. Three, I think, or something, <laughs> or something like that. And here I'm getting a pimple on my nose, you know. But then I got to tell you, when it got to the point when I was able to, pop and, psh, and it was able to release. It was a breakthrough, and and everybody needs a breakthrough. We're destined for that breakthrough. We were born for the breakthrough. Birth is the breakthrough. Death is the ultimate breakthrough. So if we're going to take the revelation that's been given to us, the divine revelation seriously that Jesus in the gospel is, and even though this is a leap for people, okay, not just getting religious and getting spiritual, but getting real so that we can get real, capital R, religious, so that we can get real, capital R, spiritual, so that the truth can set us free. The great JP said, freedom is for love. And we can't be set free without truth. And so the constraints of not being free 
prevent us from really opening out then and then experiencing even a, a communion and a joy and a peace in the midst of the mystery and the chaos. You know, almost like just kicking back, not surrendering, not just giving in in the, in, in the negative term, but surrendering ultimately with the, with the freedom, like what Jesus, like what we say at Mass, right? What do we say? The death he freely accepted. I mean, you know, J- J- Jesus didn't find it easy. And he's the absolute and ultimate teacher about suffering and about love. And he's had some major stress. So I think that word, you you mentioned surrender, is such a key thing, even for me, for many years. I heard that so long ago, and it's in so many of the spiritual master's writings, is simply an interior free will choice to surrender to God. He's got everything under control. And we just have to surrender and let. Even even our brothers and sisters marched into lion's dens, coliseums, to right. concentration camps. Right, right. Is a surrender. I mean, not that you don't do what you can to avoid, you know, where you can, but the surrender to God. Yeah, and there's an art to that. Benedict Pope Benedict just met with fifty thousand young people, man, in St. Peter's Square the other day, and he was talking about the art of learning, the art of being human. Learning the art of being human. And then in another time when he's talking about the saints, he's talking about they teach us to learn the art of loving. And he started with the art of being human because grace builds on nature. And sometimes we don't know how to be be human because we don't know how to suffer. We don't know how to suffer because we don't know how to love. Sometimes we don't know how to love because we don't know the love. You know, And, and you talk about stuff that people go through. I'm coming up to the second anniversary of losing my mom, man, and it's still the pain. It's like it's never gonna go away. It's never going to go away. It changes. It changes, but it's never going to go away. And that kind of pain, you know what that did for me? That could have just made me isolate and turn in on myself. But then I was thinking about the, the day it happened. I was thinking about the, the people who lived their life and people that we work with. We work our hands-on work with the poor, our community, Francesco Productions with, with the poor and, and people who suffer. And I think about people, and it put me in communion with people who never knew what I lost when people never know that love and then their suffering is on a whole nother level because they can't break through because as JP says freedom is for love so when they don't have that freedom then it becomes it becomes almost impossible it becomes on the brink of impossibility so the necessity of faith the necessity of moving through the darkness of faith look at look at blessed mother Teresa come be my light Ay, ay, ay. Mm. You know, I mean, did I make a mistake trusting in the sacred heart of Jesus? <laughs> did I make a mistake? That's like St. Francis at the end of his life. He's got the stigmata in his hands. He was saying, pray for me, brothers. Pray for me. Pray for you. <laughs> you want us to pray for you? Ay, ay, what about the rest of us? If that's how you feel now, what am I going to do? I was struck by you know? one of Mother, Blessed Mother Teresa's words when, when she said, you know, which was revealed after she passed away, you know, so much of her journal that my prayers go to heaven and then they fall down like daggers piercing my soul. It feels like a knife going inside me. <laughs> and, and for her to say that makes me think, well, then <laughs> what chance do well, I have? How about, my, how about my girl Therese, 24 years old, doctor of the church, Carmelite, devoted to Mary, had a trouble praying the rosary. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but she loved Mary. <laughs> but so, she had trouble playing so, the rosary. So on that subject, I love that. I love that. That makes that makes that helps when when it seems not to make sense to them. That makes so much sense to me. Yeah, it, it's consoling uh, to a degree that, that well, some it, of that spiritual sensi- magnitude. It sensitizes me mm. to the lack of sensibility mm. to this tremendous mystery and to this gift. And that's like a that's like the. <laughs> It's like the pimple popping. Right. It's like the release of the soul. It's like a breakthrough, you know? Well, and it's like a, oh, can you it's co- like a breath of fresh air. Can you, know? you comment on why the good Lord allows us to go through those types of deserts? I mean, you Moses was him, in the desert for 40 years. He's, he's a big boy. He can speak for himself. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I don't... I mean, Moses in the desert for 40 years. Look at that. I mean? And Moses, he said, tap the rock. He went like that. The water didn't come. He went one more time. He yeah. tapped the rock. God was very you annoyed. He says, that. you're supposed to die into the promised land, 58th Street. You're going to die on 55th Street. Yeah. Right on the brink. You, know? you have to look in the You've got to stay there. over there, but you can't go. Yeah. Go figure. But that is that is one of those common themes through all of uh, even the spiritual masters that, yeah. that they suffered this enormous, you know, John of the Cross talking about this interior, the, the, the dark night of the soul, yeah. the senses. Yeah. I mean, wh- why is that, do you think, important for us? Well, it's important for us because it was important for them. It was important for them because they were set free by the truth of love. Mm. And as John Paul says, freedom is for love. 
so that we can be free to let this love penetrate us, consume us, purify us, transform us, and sustain us, and then help us to let ourselves go and to pour ourselves out and to allow ourselves to be poured out and to come to love it, not just to accept it, mm. but to love it. When Jesus says, you, you cannot follow me unless you pick up the cross and carry it. And any old fool can pick up the cross and just drag it along through life like some big, dumb, old, heavy thing, you know. But it takes a special someone, and that special someone with that capital S, every single person without exception has passed through that love, come from that love, and is destined for that love. And in, in, between now and the time when we get it, and you never get it, it gets you. And then when you do come close to it, there's never enough. There's always more. And, and Benedict speaks magnificently, makes it like precisely clear about the drama of this more of love, you know, and the fullness of truth. And, and we go on and on and on, you know, it's like, and then, you know, yeah, you get a flat tire and you get extra money to fix the flat tire and then all of a sudden the battery goes. Then you change the battery and then all of a sudden you go home and the kids are playing baseball and then boom, somebody, somebody breaks the window. And then all of a sudden, you know, and sometimes it just doesn't stop. It just, mm -hmm. it just keeps going. And, you know, and, and, and so do we. Well, I know you talk throughout yeah. your book about the crucified love and how, yeah. you know, just looking at meditating. I think that's so powerful as Christians. You know, we, as we're talking about, you know, you encounter suffering in this life, and by our human intellect alone, we can't understand, you know, how a good God allows this to happen, happens to me in particular. Yeah. You know, human elect, intellect alone can't penetrate that mystery. John Paul II said that in his, his encyclical on suffering. But it's in the light of the cross and when we meditate on the cross, what he's done for us, and you quote von Balthasar in your book, he said, it is only when we look the crucified one in the eye that mm. we recognize the abyss of selfishness, even of that which we are accustomed to call love. Yeah. That we find out and see what true love is. Exactly. That giving of oneself on the cross and how yeah. what he did for us. That's it. Yeah, and how it awakens something in us, right? When we and, it, and, it, and it, it connects us. And this is the whole reality and the spirituality of communion, which is what the church exists for. And Benedict has been saying lately that the church exists for evangelization, for reaching out, for going out, for being about this love mm -hmm. for real. Right. You know, for real, which has consequences, which causes us to, to make decisions and which causes us to, to be concerned about others and to be concerned about others makes us become aware of them. And, and, and it's very, very difficult, but it's, it's, it's divinely beautiful, you know, and, and that, that, that divinity, all of that like high stuff comes so low. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the favorite things from Benedict when he's, look, you know, we're getting ready, you know, because I, I did a Christmas song earlier today and we're getting ready to come into Advent season. And, and one of the things he says that God made himself small so that we would not fear his greatness. Mm. And there's something so great about this love that we can't comprehend, but it pulls us through and it carries us along. You know, one of Father Benedict's favorite songs, and I learned it for him years ago, and I think I recorded it somewhere, and uh, it's called Sing Out My Soul. Sing out my soul to the Lord, sing out my soul to the Lord, sing out my soul to the Lord our God. His love will carry you along, and it's like, and, and, and to be carried along is, is a beautiful thing. And that's sometimes when I feel like, how am I going to get up this morning? You know, it's like the kid in school. I got like nine subjects. I got 500 pages to read. I got mm, ver verbs to conjugate, and things to memorize, you know, disciplines to undergo. How am I going to do all of this? And you, you, you don't think you're going to do it and you do your best and you leave the rest to God and the next thing you know, you're getting it done. You know, and Woody Allen did have a point, you know. He says, uh, you know, 90% of life is like showing up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you show, you come before this love. And yeah. even when somebody's like, has a question, we say, what? What a great prayer. Yeah. You know, Francis did that. Who am I? And who are you? Right. Over and over, all night long. Who am I? And who are you? Whoa, there you go. <laughs> face to face, nose to nose. Yeah. Yeah. You know, eye to eye, heart mm -hmm. to heart. Love to love. Yeah. Well, we've got to take a, a quick break, and we'll be back with Father Stan Fortuna, so don't go away. For more information on Father Stan's music ministry, check out his website, 
at www.francescoproductions.com. That's francescoproductions.com. Welcome back to Life on the Right, and tonight we have Father Stan with us, and we're talking about love, and it can seem kind of abstract, but we want to talk now Ooh. something about the uh, social doctrine, teaching the church, love in action. Yeah. And for something, you know, Pope Benedict's written extensively about, his encyclical. And, oh, yeah. Um, and it's part of your charism, your community, to work with the poor. Hands-on work here. with the poor mm -hmm. and, uh, and evangelization, and it's, it's what gave birth to Francesco Productions. And, and now, after 23 years, we're developing in terms of now the friars ourselves, you having hands-on work with the poor. Now, the poor that we're working with and who are such a blessing and challenge to us and gift to us, we're trying to help them to get their hands-on work. Mm -hmm. you know. And this is really where... Uh, where Benedict's encyclical, uh, you know, on charity and truth is, is amazing. He says, because whether it's uh, s uh, publicly or privately, when we just get people kind of hooked on being dependent, this is not his words, but this is the meaning mm -hmm. of it. He says, then we minimize their freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is the beauty of this, uh, these wonderful guys. They got, uh, it's, uh, there's Crucifix Ministries there, and they're doing great, great work in, in Malawi. And matter of fact, we're gonna, we got a Malawi project going on. I got these rosaries right here. These are handmade, hand-cut ebony cross here and made of these beautiful beads. And then we're going to have um, some beautiful uh, wooden beads and then even ebony beads that we, you know, we're going to sell and make available to people. Unique, you ain't going to find them nowhere else, and it's going to benefit the people down there. But In Malawi. In Malawi. Mm -hmm. But these people are working. And the dignity of work and the dignity of labor is elevated and lifting people up and it, because then they can give of themselves mm -hmm. and this is this is really then you know how, how the civilization of love is gonna is gonna you know brick by brick mm -hmm. person by person is mm -hmm. you know is, is gonna is gonna happen for real yeah. Could we get a better price on those if we went through China? <laughs> <laughs> well, I go to China with you and I'll give it to you for free. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We market uh, this right. Take it to a you know an outside country. Uh, yeah. Oh, I guess it already is. <laughs> no, no, no. We got it. We got it no, right, those man. Are beautiful. And in house, and, brother. In house. And you were describing early for the show what it was like. You know, watching the the, the man. Even make the ebony beads. Yeah, the beads of like he's taking a, a strip of ebony like that. It's it's cut in four squares, and then he cuts them into little squares, and then he takes the square and he holds it in a, with a plier because he doesn't have the proper tools. And he's taking a drill with a little with a little sanding belt bit on the end of, the, of a drill, and it goes. <laughs> Fifty-five for one rosary. Hello, <laughs> and ebony is like stone. It's magnificent, and the, the dedication and the determination of these people, and the the dignity that oozes out of them because they are working and then that's a guy and then we're linked up with them so it's beautiful and it's beautiful it's the Francesco the Filo Francesco International Love Outreach you know and it's at home and abroad because abroad is home too you know Can we you don't want to make like people who are far away feel like foreigners right. but the spirituality of communion really helps us to look into the eye of another and see a brother or a sister and John Paul says this is the meaning of solidarity I know you've traveled a lot in Africa. Can you tell us about some of your experiences there? I know we have some groups every now and then, some priests from Africa. And it's always something uh, hopeful when you meet other people from Africa, the church there. There's a certain vibrancy about it. There is, and, and it's based on the love that suffers. Mm -hmm. Case in point, it was this huge festival. There was 80,000 people out in the bush I mean, it, it, uh, you've never seen anything like this. People looking like grapes, like heads, like, you know, akin to like the five million plus in Manila in World Youth Day. And after everybody left on the back of trucks, they were tr shipping them out and everybody was leaving. And there was this w woman who was sitting by the chapel. And after it was all done, we went into the chapel, we prayed. And then the team, we went in and we had some dinner and then came out of the chapel after dinner and this woman was still sitting there. And I went to say goodnight to Jesus. Then I went back into my, my little spot where I was staying. The lady was still there. I got up early in the morning, went back into the chapel. The lady was still there. I was like, oh, my goodness. I went to Father Emmanuel. I said, Father Emmanuel. I said, this lady was there from yesterday. She's still sitting over there. He goes, eh. So he goes over to her, and in the native language, he says to her, you know, where? She goes, she goes yeah. He goes, oh. He goes, he says, 
nobody, nobody gave her a ride, and she just sat there. Mm. She didn't complain. She sat. She waited. Mm. Patience. To be patient means to be willing to suffer. The willingness to suffer, not to be to, to kick back and to and to enter into a new kind of slavery, because you don't mm. got to go to Africa for that. You can do, we're doing it right. We're doing a very good job of a new kind of slavery right, right here in our right. own country, yeah. you know, with all the high stuff we got going yeah. on. And it's amazing that the power of the love that enables people to be patient mm. and to wait. What do you, in this country? What do you see as some of the, the great challenges for our young people? What do you preach on and, and teach in some of your conferences and things? Just to, to, be, to be free, but with truth. Because mm. freedom is something everybody wants. Young people say, oh, I'm 13, I can't wait till I'm 16. You know, then, then, then I'll be free. Then 16, well, when I'm 18, then I'll be free. <laughs> then 18, when I'm 21, <laughs> then I'll be free. <laughs> then 21, when I get my own job, and I get make, then I'll be free. When I make six figures, then I'll be free. When I pay the bills, then I'll be free. And it's always like getting to the next point that's gonna, right. it's gonna be something mm -hmm. that's gonna get them free. Believe me, it's gonna help. But it's not gonna do the job. Mm -hmm. It's not a something, it's a capital S, a someone. Mm -hmm. And then young people hear that, and they kind of rec it helps them to recognize where they are, and then it can help them to give shape and to help them to determine where they're going, which is getting in touch with their vocation. And as the great JP has said, endlessly and magnificently and heroically and soon to be beatified, hopefully next year, sometime mm. maybe, uh, beatifically, mm -hmm. he has said that the innate, the fundamental innate vocation of every single human being without exception is love. And that's why. Mm -hmm. So that young people want that truth mm -hmm. to set them free, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, 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 it's, it's very expensive. <laughs> And well, and today, too, it seems like our young people obviously are getting bombarded with this message that, you know, equating lust with love. Yeah. How do you untangle that for young people? Yeah, um, God can turn it around. Mm -hmm. You know, at the wedding, they ran out of wine, right. you know, and blessed mother didn't say, y'all are getting drunk anyway. You had enough of wine. <laughs> Just give them some water. <laughs> no, she told Jesus. She pressed him to work the miracle. She gave him more wine. Right. They were already drunk. Right. And she even made more wine. So yeah. the way that she made the water go into wine, she mm -hmm. could make the fire of lust be transformed into the fire of love. Mm -hmm. Instead of being so concerned about what am I going to get, we can become passionate and we can be on fire about what am I going to give this is such a profound distinction that's disturbing marriages. It's messing, up, uh, it's messing up priests. It's messing up the church. It's messing up believers. It's messing up non-believers. It's messing up everybody. Mm -hmm. It's messing up humanity. Mm -hmm. It's messing up our culture. It's destroying our country. It's destroying the cultures of the world. It seems like it, it's such a challenge for us to, to make that shift from our self-centeredness to put the focus on others. Lifelong project. Yeah. But it must begin. Right. In some ways, it seems almost like uh, we say it so often, you know, don't be self, but it, I know I realize more and more, it's like, it's that, you know, we take our eyes off the Lord. That's the whole problem. We're putting them on ourselves and what other people are doing, what they have, what I don't have, and we're not being a true disciple of following Him. And now we're tell they're telling us we have about two minutes, and we our last song is Joy. Can you set that up for us? Yeah, it's a thing called uh, What Joy, you know, and it's like, what joy I feel when I can sing, and I kind of snatched it from St. Augustine, mm -hmm. you know. My spirit wants to fly beyond all syllabic bonds, soaring way up high beyond the meaning of all words, and it's like, you know, and Augustine goes on when people are working. Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes when you're, when you're working, you're even if you can't sing, you'd be mm. making some kind of a sound or you're whistling. Mm. Or I used to sing in the shower because I thought nobody was listening. But my mother would be saying, what's going on up there? <laughs> you know, and I thought I was Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I was free to sing because I thought nobody was listening, you know. So the song is just really an expression of just what it says. What joy I feel when I can sing. Because mm. if someone can sing, I don't mean like have a talent for singing. But I mean letting go of yourself. If someone can sing, someone can pray. And if someone can pray, someone can know themselves as being infinitely loved. Mm -hmm. And if someone comes to know themselves as being infinitely loved, the rest becomes history and a beautiful history with the kind of a beauty that beautifies all things that are ugly. Like people say in my neighborhood, God don't like ugly. 
<laughs> and that's because he makes all things beautiful. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you, brother. Great oh, to see great. you. Great to see you again, brother. Fun. Bless you. Thank you. Well, next week we're going to have the Lourdes volunteers on, and it'll be a great show speaking about our, our message of our Blessed Mother there in Lourdes and the work that they do to help the sick people that go uh, to France. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you and give you His peace. And may Almighty God bless you and fill you with His love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you next week. to you.